Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Kathy from House of TOEFL and today we're going to talk about some vocabulary tips for the reading section. Now this lesson will be intermediate so it won't be too difficult and it won't be too easy. There's something for everyone here. In addition I have written all new passages. There's nothing here from my reading book so even if you have my reading book it's worth your time to watch this video and get some new tips for the vocabulary and learn some new words. Now, if you know anything about me, I always say that vocabulary is the most important thing to improve and that applies to all sections of the TOEFL. You need vocabulary for every single section. So let's get started with this very important video. Now, first of all, I want to say that there are over 1 million words in the English language. That means even native speakers can't remember or memorize all these words. So these are tricks you can use not just in your TOEFL, but beyond. When you get to university, if you have to write a paper or do some research and you come across a word you don't know, you won't always have time to look it up in the dictionary. So let's go over some tricks you can use to infer the meaning of the word and of course this will help you on the TOEFL. First is look for words that show contrast. Those can give you an important clue that the word you don't know has a different meaning than another word. So first let's talk about the words I'm referring to. I'm referring to words like but on the other hand, in contrast, while, whereas, conversely, unlike, though, however, and nonetheless. Let's start with a simple example to show you what I mean. Unlike his combative brother, Hector, Juan is rather complacent. Now, we know that Hector is combative and we have the word unlike. So combative must mean something very different than complacent. And in fact, the correct answer is the second answer. Complacent means agreeable. Now, if you'd like to pause the video, now would be a good time to try these on your own. So go ahead and do so. All right, now let's talk about the word ubiquitous. This sentence starts with although. Although witchcraft is practically non-existent in the West, so in the West it doesn't exist. It is ubiquitous. So ubiquitous must mean something very different than non-existent. So the correct answer is the first answer, omnipresent, which means found everywhere. So ubiquitous means omnipresent. In the second example, it says pirates intermittently engaged in violence, but there's a contrast word, not as often as legend suggests. So they didn't engage in it often. They only gauge, engaged in it intermittently, which actually means occasionally. The third answer is correct. Okay, if you'd like to pause the video, now would be a good time. All right, now we're looking at the word zenith. We have, it reached its zenith in 700 AD. However, there's our contrast word. In the early 900s, it began to decline, go down, and fragment, fragment, break apart. So its zenith must mean its high point, its peak. The fourth answer is correct. Now for the next one, fish move in schools. So that means they move in groups, right? Then we have the contrast, on the other hand, sharks are solitary. So solitary must mean something different than being in a group. Solitary means alone. The second answer, lone, is correct. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so in the first example, we have that Plato's works are actually illegitimate, which means they're not real, they're not authentic. But then we have the word nonetheless. His earliest works are generally regarded as the most authentic. So authentic must mean real or genuine. And the closest word to that is the second word, reliable. Okay, for the next one, we have the word whereas, which shows there's going to be a contrast. Whereas deep sea fish have slow, have slow metabolisms to deal with the dearth of food in their habitat. But then it says, Fish that live near the surface of the ocean have an abundance. So dearth much, must mean something different than abundance. And this means the fourth answer is correct, scarcity. 
Dearth means scarcity. Okay, now use your knowledge of the world. As a TOEFL taker, you are an adult. So most of my students at least have a high school diploma. Many of them have bachelor's, master's degrees. Some of them have PhDs. So that means you know a lot about the world. You know a lot about biology, nature, outer space, business, and many more topics. You can use that to determine the meaning of a word. Go ahead and pause the video now and take a look at these two words. Okay, let's talk about ephemeral. So you probably know that insects do not live very long, right? So their life cycle is ephemeral, which means the second answer, brief. Because as you know, insects don't live very long. Next, I'm sure you know about butterflies and how they have several life stages and they change significantly through their life. So a metamorphosis must mean a major change. So the third answer is correct transformations. Okay, go ahead and take a moment to pause the video and try these three words. Okay, hopefully you have your answer. Now I had to include dinosaurs because, well, if you've ever taken the TOEFL or looked at some of the materials, you know that dinosaurs are one of their favorite topics. So I had to do it. Now, Dinosaurs were ancient. Well, we know dinosaurs have been extinct for 65 million years. Ancient must mean that they're very old. The second answer is correct. Dinosaurs are archaic, very, very old. We also know they were annihilated by an asteroid. We know that they no longer exist. Annihilated must mean they were destroyed. Another word for destroyed is the first, eradicated. Now, another thing we know is that asteroids do not move slowly. They move at a high velocity, a high speed. So the fourth answer is correct. Velocity means speed. Okay, go ahead and pause the video here. Now, I personally have never been to the Great Wall of China, but there's a few things I know about it. One is that it's very appealing to tourists. The first answer is correct. It is attractive. Appealing means attractive. Another thing I know is it's a monument of great grandeur. Grandeur is the third answer, magnificent, because of course the Great Wall of China is magnificent. And then I also know it has historical significance. It's very important to the history of China. So the fourth answer is correct. I'm using what I already know about the Great Wall of China. Okay, so you may not know the word at all, but you can still use the context. The words around it, the sentence it's in, or the sentence before or after, if necessary, can also provide you with clues to get the right answer. So let's look at a simple example to start. Coral snakes are very reclusive and it's extremely rare to see them in the wild. So even if I don't know reclusive, I know if it's extremely rare to see something, then this is not an animal that is in a group. And it's also not an animal that comes out very often or is seen very often. So the first answer is correct. Coral snakes are secluded. I can't necessarily conclude they're fearful or fearful or they're cowardly or that they're sheltered somewhere, but I do know that they're not seen. So they're secluded. The first answer is correct. Now for the second one, itinerant, maybe you've never seen that word before, but if you read, you see that the, the word traveled and you see the word migrating, which means that this is a group of people that moved. The second answer is correct because mobile means something that moves. So itinerant means mobile. Okay. You can pause the video here. Okay. Hopefully you have your answer. Okay. So these plants remain dormant during dry spells. Then we have the next sentence that says they may remain dormant for long periods of drought and awaken when it rains. So that must mean they are not active because they awaken only when it rains. So dormant must mean something about they're not very active. So that gives us the third answer as a correct answer inactive. Okay, the next one, the context is extremely important. So some minerals such as gold are very dense. 
These minerals can build up in riverbeds and less dense material are carried away by water. So if something can be carried away by water and another can't, then the material that is not carried away must be heavier. So dense, the first answer is correct. Dense in this context means heavy. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. This one's a little longer. Okay, hopefully you have your answers. Now, remote, let's look at the context. It says that in order to get there, you have to travel over miles of dirt road. So that means it's far away from metropolitan areas. That means that this is a distant area. So the second answer is correct. It is a relatively distant area. Erosion. Okay, the context tells us that erosion happened from wind, rainfall and winds. Now, what do we know happens to rock if there's a lot of rainfall and wind? It, it breaks down. It, it wears down. So, actually, the first answer is correct. Disintegration. Then the last word, sacred. Now, the context is very important here. It says that they have a spiritual relationship with the land and that it is hallowed terrain. That tells us this is very important to their culture. So important, the third answer is correct. Sacred means holy. Okay, that brings us to the end of our short video about the reading section. There are many more tips and many more words to learn in my book, Mastering the Reading Section for the TOEFL, which is available on Amazon. Please make sure you get the third edition because I did write three editions and the third is the most current because it includes the changes that were made in August of 2019. The reading section was changed significantly and you can buy that on Amazon. Also, be sure to visit my website at www.houseoftoefl.com. There you can find my blog and my other videos and also the services I offer such as private tutoring. And be sure to continually improve your vocabulary. Now, science and studies tell us that it takes seven uses of a word before it's part of your long-term memory. So don't just read a word once. Make sure you not only read it, but use it seven times. That is going to ensure that you will have the word in your long-term memory. Again, vocabulary, it's so important. I can't stress that enough. So again, thank you for joining me. And I'm Kathy from House of Toefl. And as always, good luck on your test.